Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this dissection video of front of arm. This video will be very helpful for many of you who are dissecting the upper limb or who are preparing for their practical exams and want to revise this topic in short period. For this purpose at the end of this video I have included some important questions which are asked in Viva on this topic. So watch this video till the end and let's begin. Upper limb is divided into arm, forearm and hand. Arm extends from shoulder joint to elbow joint. Forearm extends from elbow joint to wrist joint and hand lies distal to the wrist joint. Coming to the arm. Arm is divided into anterior compartment and posterior compartment by medial intermuscular septum, lateral intermuscular septum and humerus. Humerus is the bone of the arm while medial and lateral intermuscular septi are the modifications of the defacia which are attached to the humerus. In front of the humerus and the septi we get the anterior compartment which is also called as the front of arm or flexor compartment. Behind the humerus and the septi we get the posterior compartment which is also called as back of arm or extensor compartment. Today we are dealing with the anterior compartment of arm. Let's see the dissection of anterior compartment of arm followed by viva questions. Today we are going to see the anterior compartment of the arm. Already the axilla and the pectoral regions are dissected. Now skin in the anterior compartment of the arm is reflected and the veins which are accompanying, accompanying this brachial artery they are also removed. Now we will see in the anterior compartment of arm there are three muscles. This muscle, this is the biceps brachii muscle, this is the biceps brachii muscle. Here we get another muscle, this muscle, this is a coracobrachialis muscle, this muscle is coracobrachialis muscle. And third muscle we get, this is the brachialis muscle, this muscle is the brachialis muscle. Now this biceps brachii it has a two heads this is short head and this is the long head this is a long head which arises from the supraglenoid tubercle of the scap uh, scapula it is the intracapsular tendon and it lies in the bicipital groove in the bicipital groove along with this long head of the biceps we get one more artery here this is an anterior circumflex humeral artery and ascending branch of this artery ascending branch of this anterior circumflex humeral artery also lies in this bicipital groove along with this long head of the biceps brachii muscle. Now this is short head of the biceps brachii which arises from the tip of coracoid process along with the coracobrachialis muscle. Now this is the coracobrachialis muscle. This coracobrachialis muscle is most of the time it is a pierced by nerve and this is a musculocutaneous nerve which is a nerve of the anterior compartment of the arm. This musculocutaneous nerve lies just deep to this biceps brachii muscle and just above the elbow, just above the elbow, it continues as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So the name musculocutaneous supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment of arm and becomes continuous as the cutaneous nerve of the forearm. In addition to the musculocutaneous nerve, we get this is the median nerve which is formed by lateral root and the medial root. This is a median nerve. It lies lateral to the artery in the upper part of the arm. In the middle of the arm, median nerve crosses the brachial artery from lateral to the medial side. And in the cubital fossa, this median nerve lies medial to the brachial artery. Along with that we get medial to this brachial artery there are two nerves medial cutaneous nerve of forearm this is medial cutaneous nerve of forearm along with that this is the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve lies medial to this brachial artery in the upper part of the arm then pierces the medial intermuscular septum and enters into the posterior compartment of the arm to reach behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Along with this ulnar nerve, one more small branch we get, small nerve we get and this is the ulnar collateral nerve which enters into the medial head. This enters into the medial head of the triceps muscle and this nerve arises from the radial nerve. So this is the branch to the medial head 
of the medial head of triceps brachii muscle as it accompanies the ulnar nerve it is also called as ulnar collateral nerve along with that one artery we get that is superior ulnar collateral artery now we will see the artery in this compartment veins are removed to have the better view now this is the brachial artery it is the continuation of the axillary artery below the level of teres major muscle here is the level of teres major lower border of teres major this brachial artery it runs in the anterior compartment of arm and in the cubital fossa this brachial artery at the neck of radius terminates by dividing into the radial artery and ulnar artery this artery is the ulnar artery in the arm it gives muscular branches to the muscles of the anterior compartment these are the muscular branches to the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm it gives nutrient artery to the humerus and it lies it, its level is at the insertion of coraco this is the insertion of coraco brachialis at that level we get one artery enters into the humerus this is the nutrient artery of the humerus in addition to that we get here the largest branch of the brachial artery this is a profunda brachii artery this is a profunda brachii artery which divides in the ascending branch and the descending branch ascending branch it passes up Words and anastomosis with the descending branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery, while the descending branch it accompanies the radial nerve in the radial groove. Now, in the lower part the, of the arm, this brachial artery gives rise to the inferior ulnar collateral artery. Here, in this cadaver, there are two inferior ulnar collateral arteries. One passes in front of the medial epicondyle to form the anastomosis, while another uh, inferior ulnar collateral pierces the medial intermuscular septum, enters in the posterior compartment and ends by forming anastomosis behind the medial epicondyle and it gives one branch that is transverse branch which ends in the uh, olecranon fossa, forming anastomosis with transverse branch of the posterior descending branch of profunda brachii artery. Along with that, we see one more artery arising from this brachial artery. It enters in the posterior compartment by piercing medial intermuscular septum along with this ulnar nerve and so the name uh, ulnar collateral artery. This is superior ulnar collateral artery, runs in the posterior compartment of the arm and ends by forming anastomosis behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. This was the dissection of anterior compartment of arm or front of arm. Now we will move to the viva questions. Here I have included some basic and very commonly asked questions on this topic, although many other questions can be asked. For the practical and viva exams, identification of all the structures which are dissected is must. Like one should be able to identify the muscle, vessel or now. Coming to the very basic question asked, arm and its divisions that is extent of the arm and how it is divided into the anterior and posterior compartments which already we have discussed in this video muscles of the front of arm biceps brachii corego brachialis brachialis these three muscles can be at us for it, their attachments now supply and actions nerve of the anterior compartment of front of arm that is a musculocutaneous now it can be asked for its origin root value distribution very commonly asked question is why is it called as musculocutaneous the reason is it supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment of arm and continues down as the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm other nerves seen here like median nerve ulnar nerve can be asked for the identification origin root value and distribution brachial artery can be asked for its origin extent and branches other questions which can be asked on the front of arm include anastomosis around the elbow joint, morphological importance of coracobrachialis muscle focusing on ligament of strudels, anatomical changes which occur at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis muscle and sometimes bicipital group can be asked for the attachments and contents. Attachments will include the muscles attached to the medial lip, lateral lip and the floor of the bicipital group. That's all about the anterior compartment or front of arm. I'm sure you all will find it very useful. Thank you for watching.